Now let's talk a little bit about the move, scale, and rotate tools. Let's get an object in here. If we, ha if we just hover over these axes, you'll notice that they highlight. And you can click on them and drag them anywhere you'd like to. And notice the number in the middle of the screen, or, in the, or should I say, wherever you start dragging, is actually the, n the number you are moving it. So, so notice it starts from zero every time I start to click and drag. It actually tells you how many units you're moving within the viewport along that axis. Notice also your position is given here in the coordinates right here. If you'd like to change that to zero, you can just press zero in front of there in each one of these. And then hit enter, and it'll automatically go right back to the origin, which is the zero on every axis. And you can also adjust the size in here. But notice it doesn't, notice it changes them all. The reason why it changes them all is because we still haven't converted this to an edible object. We are stuck within the confines of of these, the attributes, the original attributes that go along with the cone, which is why they still exist. So we can't change that unless we make this object edible. Now if we change the size of something and apply, it will only apply it to that one axis and not everything. So we have a little funny kind of shape there. I guess it could look like going on look like a piece of a ring or something. Notice also we can make a shape negative so if we apply that we'll get the um, inverse on the, on the y-axis. Now we've been sizing it with this with the coordinates manager which you can can do or if you can just go to the scale scale tool right here and you can click on this axis. But notice it doesn't doesn't change. It doesn't go farther than the bottom there. So you'd have to use the negative in that and then uh, then you have free reign to move it however you would like to but you can't go past an axis so if you go so far it stops now if you hold down on the shift button notice it'll change it to the two axes below it so if you hold down the shift button and click and drag it will only adjust those two axes and not the y axis or not the axis that you held over your cursor. You hover over this with your cursor, hold down on shift, it'll only it'll constrain it to those axes. And also if you keep holding on shift, notice it quantizes your movements. So if you press shift on here and notice it see intervals of of uh, re relative intervals of ten more or less. So it can it constrains your movements. And notice also if I hold down on shift I can I can continue to change what sets of axes I'm controlling. Now if you click out in the open it'll just change all the axes. And also if you click on the middle, it'll control all axes just the same. Except notice you don't have your your number in the middle of your object telling you how big or how small you're getting if you click out in the open. Now if you wanna Constrain if you want to actually constrain it to an axis, but still want to be able to click out in the open. Like usually, like if you're focused on something way out here, and if you want to change just a little bit of something, but you can't quite see your um, little controls. What you can do, and see, this is the red. This is the x-axis. You can uh, disconnect, or you can disable these. And then if you click out in the open it'll confine it to that axis. So regardless of whether you see your controls if you click on the open, it will only adjust the X axis. And notice that uh, changes for every tool. So if you go back to the move tool, it has all the axes available. So these settings are actually different for every independent tool you have, including the rotate tool, which more or less works the same way. Move it like this, except if you hold down on shift, notice it's only rotating on the y-axis. So there's not, not really a whole lot that's done there. Unless you move your mouse another way. 
then you can get all kinds of things. And notice, again, in your coordinates, it tells you where things are moving. So you're not just moving things in the dark. You can actually know where you're moving them. And also you can quantize your movements. So you can move the mouse left or right, or up and down. Move it along those axes. But so you notice it quantizes it, so it, it remains at, I guess, angles, degrees of 5. Yes, degrees of 5, so. And move it here. Intervals of 10. So, that's the uh, move, scale, and rotate tools. And also know this this little um, button here. Use world object coordinate system. You notice down here at the bottom, little tool tips will actually tell you what the objects are for. This is a strange button. I generally don't use this. It doesn't uh, seem to do a lot for me. If you um, if you click out in the open, if you start moving. Wait, hold on. If you all right, let's constrain this to the y-axis. Okay, if we click and drag, it constrains it to the y-axis. But notice that the object is oriented on its own y-axis. We use the world object system. It goes straight up the world, uh, the world y-axis. So if we actually middle click and go into the front view and click and drag in the perspective view, notice it's moving up and down the actual world y-axis and not the object y-axis. So that's just a little tidbit to, for that strange little, uh, strange little button there. One of the important things is to remember is when you use these tools, it's usually most efficient to use the shortcut keys. If you look down here, the shortcut key to this is E, and the shortcut key to the scale tool is T or transform. And then R is rotate. If we just use the R buttons, the T. If we just use all these buttons, we can have them available to us right at the keyboard. This is why this is, goes back to me recommending you keep your left hand on the lower left hand side of the keyboard, so you can change these things however you want, because um, it's very helpful. Otherwise, you'll probably spend some time doing quite a bit of clicking.